Good morning. It is Monday morning again. Today we are beginning the month of August. I can't believe how fast the year is going by. That seems like the obli obligatory thing to say at the first of every month, but can you say? It's good to see you again. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis in Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries and Outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious or who want to build their faith but don't have a church connection. And I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast where we encourage people to lean into and overcome the difficult situations and experiences in their lives by sharing stories of those who have. That's a mouthful. So this morning, I want to talk to you all about how we can love and accept ourselves. This is a topic that keeps coming up again and again in people that I talk to. I, as many as, as many of you know, I did Bible studies at the county jail for a while, and this one topic was the common denominator in every woman that I met there that they had been told over and over and over again in words and actions in however, that they didn't matter, that they were damaged, that they were not good enough in one way, shape, or form. And that's a concept that's really important. We may not think of it very often, but it's so important that we understand ourselves as fearfully and wonderfully made, as Psalm 139 says. We are creatures of, the, of God, and we are loved and valued. But so often... We have a difficult time loving and accepting ourselves just as we are, flaws and all. So I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. And, you know, if we are pretty self-confident, there's a good chance that we have something about ourselves that we would not like to be shared or for other people to know. And this is a beneficial conversation to, to look at those things too. And so let's talk about our flaws. What is a flaw? What's normal? I mean, how do we even go about defining that? We might think of something as a flaw, and then we find other people who love it and think it's an asset. So, you know, really a flaw, I don't know. I don't know that there's a hard and fast rule of what a flaw is and what normal is. It's all about the perceptions that we have around those things. So let's dive into this. What if you were able to embrace your imperfections instead of judge yourself for them? We're not quite there yet, but I wanna put that thought out there. So let's think about a few folks, for examples. Sylvester Stallone, he was told he would never have a career because of his slurred speech. What's the one thing we all do when it, when, what comes to mind when we think about Sylvester Stallone? I mean, we think about Rocky or Rambo or his movies, but his distinctive voice set him apart from all other actors. When we hear that voice, we know immediately it's Sylvester Stallone. Do we view it as a problem or a flaw? I don't know. Some may. But to me, it's distinctively Sylvester Stallone and no one else is Sylvester Stallone. Arnold Schwarzenegger was told that he would never have success because of his thick accent. I will be back. We all know that line, right? The iconic line in the Terminator movies. When we hear that voice, we know immediately it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. So is that a flaw or a quirk or a distinction? I guess it's up to you to decide and how you feel about it will decide that for you. My point in that is there isn't a hard and fast rule of what is a flaw. It's all about how we view that flaw or how we view ourselves. Maybe it isn't a flaw at all. Maybe it's an asset. Let's keep going. Let's look at some other folks. Albert Einstein was a flunky. Charles Darwin was told he wasn't smart enough. Marilyn Monroe was told she was too heavy. Maybe by some people's standards, but when it comes to 
an icon of beauty, she's at the top of the list. So what about Michael Jordan? You might say greatest of all time, or you might have a heated debate of, no, he's not someone else's. But here's the thing about Michael Jordan. He was cut from his junior high basketball team. Told he didn't have enough talent. Okay, our bodies go through growth spurts and changes. Maybe at that time he didn't, but he kind of figured out how to put it together, I would say. Defensively and offensively, it's arguably that he, it's arguable that he's one of the greatest that ever played the game. Good thing he didn't quit when someone told him he didn't have any talent. There are all kinds of examples that we can use here. Another one of my favorites is PayPal. You know, that digital currency or that digital wallet, I guess, not currency, but the digital wallet that we use all the time when we shop online and now even in person, you can use it. It, was, it came out in 1998 and in 1998 or 1999, it was voted the worst business idea of the year. It would have been easy to have given up when all your peers and critics said that it was the worst idea around. But turns out it wasn't a flaw or a bad idea after all. It's the most used, worldwide used di digital checkbook or check out whatever that those words are the digital wallet the most commonly used digital wallet in the world i guess it was a pretty good idea after all good thing that the founder had that idea and framework around his creation instead of what others said or the critics said so again is it a flaw is it an asset it really comes down to how you feel about it and the uh, the descriptions that you place on it. So let's start there. If you have something about yourself that you consider a flaw or something you don't like, take a minute or 10 and sit with it and think about it. Why and how do you consider it to be a flaw? Does it bring up certain feelings to you? Does it, is it uh, physical in nature? Is it a part of your character? Is it a skill that's pronounced or missing? What is it about you that makes it, that makes this bothersome to you? And then I want you to step back and do an objective analysis. How do others perceive it? Maybe they don't even notice it at all. And isn't that the thing? We can take a, see a thousand pictures of ourselves and see that one flaw in every picture and others don't even notice it's there. Others see us differently than we see ourselves. We look at ourselves through a microscope. Others don't. So spend some time thinking about how others view this. Do they even notice it? Something to think about. And then reframe and reassign your thoughts and feelings about it. It really comes down to how you feel about this particular aspect of your character or your physical body. How do you feel about it? Do you feel like it's a flaw and holding you back? What if it wasn't? What if it's the most distinctive thing about you that you can lead with? What if all of a sudden, it became the most desirable trait on the planet. How would you flaunt it? How would you lead with that? We're thinking about, when I was a kid, every year Christmas, or first of December, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer would come out on TV. I loved that movie. Although, it was a very emotional experience for me to watch that movie. My heart broke when Dennis the, was it Dennis? The elf, the elf that wanted to be a dentist. Don't recall his name offhand. I'm thinking Dennis, but maybe I'm just getting that from dentist. But regardless, he wanted to be a dentist, not an elf. He was cast out. Rudolph obviously had a red nose. The other reindeer didn't. He was cast out. They were deemed misfits and my heart broke for them. My favorite part of that show is seems to be a part that many people don't even recall being in the movie, but when they are running away 
they come upon this island of misfit toys. And this island of misfit toys is filled with just that, toys that were deemed flawed or weren't like all the other toys. And they found a home there. It, they, like a doll or a Jack in the Box, it wasn't named Jack. You know, who wants a, a Jim in the Box or whatever his name was. You know, all of the toys there had a perceived flaw about themselves. So Rudolph and the elf, they found some sanctuary there for a time. Ultimately, when they came back and realized that their quirks weren't flaws, but it made them unique and made them valuable. And my favorite part of this show was when Santa found the exact right home for each of those toys on the island of the misfit toys. It turns out that because of their distinct nature, each toy was specifically suited for a child that a regular, whatever that means, toy wouldn't work for. So maybe instead of flawed, think of yourself as specially created. Specially created and valuable. There's only one of you in this world. We're not robots running a program. God, what a boring world that would be. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, each of us, and we each have value. In um, First Peter, in the New Testament, there's uh, this passage about where Jesus, it's a metaphor using stones about Jesus, about how it was a stone that was cast out by the builders, turns out to be the cornerstone. And that's a metaphor for Jesus who was cast out by the religious leaders, turns out to be the foundation of faith. But I want to talk about those stones for a little bit. When, if you talk to a brick mason, they will tell you that you can tap on a brick and tell its quality. There are some that have a distinct sound, a little clink, instead of a whatever sound is supposed to have. And those are called clinker bricks, and they're set aside. And it turns out in this metaphor that those clinker bricks are the ones that become capstones. Just like Jesus was the one cast aside. He was different. He didn't play by the rules. He did all of these things differently. And he was the foundation of faith. Just so, just as you who have your, what you perceive as flaws or quirks or differences, maybe it's the foundation of something else. If you can reframe how you view that quality about yourself, it just may be the thing that makes you specially valuable and unique in this world. So embrace that about yourself. And, you know, there's power in that. There's power in claiming who you are, warts and all, as the saying goes. And it will also have ripple effects on those around you. When you are able to accept what you perceive as flaws or insecurities or what have you, others around you will feel safe with their own as well. So that's my thoughts for you today. Don't, don't criticize yourself for what you perceive to be things that are less than. Own them. If it's something about you that you need to grow, then do it. If it's something about you that you need to let go of, then let go of it. But know this, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are valued and loved. That's it for today. I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.